Hi everyone. First of all, thank you Sensor for having me present at this conference. I'm so glad to share, share my project with you all today. My name is Fatma Qureshi and the professor who has helped me throughout this research is Dr. Shraddha Sambasiwan. I'm currently studying in Suffolk County Community College, which is located in Long Island. There are three campuses, but I'm the, specifically I'm uh, studying in Ammerman campus, which is the main one. Now, to begin, what is the purpose of this research? The purpose of this research is to raise awareness about the isoprene emission. Isoprene is a volatile organic compound. Volatile organic compounds are just chemicals that plants release to attract pollinators, allure seed dispersing animals, signal predators against herbivores, and do plant inter and intra communication. The research question is, how can we control the plant metabolic pathway to decrease the isoprene emission level in plants? The reason we want to decrease the isoprene emission level is because it, isoprene is harmful for the environment, yet it is effective for the plant itself. So we're going to create a system in which the plant can use it as pesticide, but it doesn't, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't release in the environment. Isoprene is a double bonded hydrocarbon constituent of isoprenoids. Isoprenoids are a class of volatile organic compounds and that play a huge role in metabolic activities. Isoprene emission is affected by various photosynthetic factors such as light, temperature, drought, and nitrogen availability. Isoprene oxidation also leads to the efficient production of ozone. The way it does that is isoprene oxidizes OH radicals that forms hydroperoxide, converting NO to NO2, so sunlight decomposes the NO2 to make ozone. Pesticides, as we all know, are used to protect plants against diseases, pathogens, and herbivores, but they have uh, so many harms than benefits. So uh, they, they uh, are harmful for the animal, they are harmful for insects and humans and humans in general. We use, for our literature search, we use Google Scholar and PMC. The three steps that we uh, needed was the extraction of isoprenoids, genetic modification, and hydrogen traps. The first step is the extraction of isoprenoids. Gas chromatography is used to extract isoprene, but it is not. It can't be used in industrial scale. Genetic modification, genetically modifying crops by introducing desirable traits, is considered to be the most suitable way. But the the way it is done is we can take a protein or gene from plant metabolic pathway and test it in different conditions to see if it increases isoprene emission or decreases isoprene emission and we can use genetic genetically modifying techniques hydrogen traps are materials that can really and easily absorb and keep hydrogens at initial stages during cold period for example zeloids so we are proposing the way to use uh the zeloids to uh, absorb absorb hydrocarbon which is isoprene in this case here we show the difference between isoprene emitters and non isoprene emitters we have um we have a velvet bean that has the isoprene emission potential of 317 while grapes doesn't produce doesn't have any isoprene emission potential and blueberry has just 0 0.0093 so the plants that have this uh, isoprene emission potential it have uh, go through a process called MEP pathway that helps them produce isoprene. Now we don't say that uh, blueberry does not have that because blueberry does produce 0 0.0093. But for now we can find the MEP pathway for blueberry. The dominant pathway in blueberry was this shikimic acid pathway. That is a seven step pathway that leads to the production of aromatic metabolites in plants that help with the pigmentation and uh, aroma of the plants. There, these are the different types of isoprene emitters. These are red uh, giant reed and this is blueberry and grape. Summary. The main aim of our study is to find possible ways to extract isoprene from the plants and store them so they can be used as a pesticide alternative. Green reed and velvet bean are the two types of plants that have the capability to produce high amounts of isoprene as compared to other plants as shown in table 1. Blueberries have isoprene emission potential of 0 0.0093 micrograms gram dry weight slash height slash height. 
So there is a difference between the two, giant weed and blueberry. This produces a lot more isoprene. This produces very little. So there should be a different protein or gene that can help us find the possible potential difference in the MAB pathway of isoprene emitting and non-isoprene emitting plants. Um, lastly, I would like to thank the organizations and people who have helped me throughout this research that, that include Safa County Community College, NSF, and my two of my professors, excellent professors, Dr. Shraddha Sambasiwan and Dr. Lizigan Kumaran. And um, also thank to Sensor again for letting me present at this platform. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and just email me at this email and I will get back to you as soon as I see it. Okay? Thank you. Bye.